listening to Sailing to Success podcast show where we share practical tips and strategies to help you be more productive, boost your profits, and grow your business. Hey there, I'm Lindsay Phillips, founder of Smooth Sailing Business Growth, and I'll be your host and captain for this 30-minute excursion. Today, we'll be learning from Baird Hall. He's a tech entrepreneur and digital marketer and founder of Wave. It's an online tool that helps marketers turn audio into custom-designed social video content. So naturally, we're going to be chatting about this tool, how it helps you, and the power of podcasting and some social media do's and don'ts, because this tool will definitely help promote your podcast show and take it to the next level. So let's dive in. Hey guys, you, as you know, you've heard me talk about Wave before and different apps to optimize your content marketing. And so um, I'm totally excited to talk to Bear Hall of Wave. And you may have even heard me talk about him as we were on a podcast success summit together. And again, I'm a big tool nerd, so I love talking about new, uh, different kind of tools. So he's a tech entrepreneur and digital marketer. He is the founder, of course, of Wave that I mentioned. And um, he leads all sales, marketing, and support efforts for the Wave team. And prior to founding Wave, he did co-found a social media startup and uh, was an early team member at an, uh, a 500 startup company. Now... Wave is an online tool that helps marketers turn audio into customized social video content, just so you kind of understand what it is. And obviously, Baird will introduce it way better than I. So we're going to talk about the power of podcasting video and then get into deep dive what that tool is and how it can help you make your podcast better and reach more people. So thanks for being on my show. Yeah, thanks, Lindsay. I'm, I'm happy to be here and excited to talk about podcasting and video and it's a, uh, it's a hot space right now and there's a lot so going is. on and no, and um, it, it, a lot of people are trying to figure it out and figure out the best way to do it. So hopefully I can um, hopefully help, help the audience um, in a few different ways. Yeah, absolutely. So let's introduce with the power of podcasting and the power of video. Cause I love how you combine the two. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as a lot of businesses are finding out podcasting is just an incredible way to, uh, build relationships with um, prospects and customers with your audience. It's it's really, in my opinion, it's it's the only way to have an authentic conversation without actually talking with somebody. I I tell a story. I yeah, went to that's a, true. I went to a conference in Nashville uh, last fall, and uh, one of the companies that was sponsoring at the at the conference, they actually did like a short six episode series. Um, about what they do and a couple different stories um, leading up to the conference. And it was the only podcast that I could find about the conference. So I listened to all of them as I was driving to this um, <laughs> conference. And when I got there, I just, I felt like I knew them. I walked right up to their booth oh, interesting. and started asking them questions. And it, that's when it really clicked with me for the first time that I've, I've actually built a relationship with these people and, but they don't know who I am. And that's really, in my opinion, the, the power of podcasting yeah. is, um, you know, using audio. It's such an intimate medium that there's really no better way to, to get your message across when, you know, you have somebody's ear lit, ear lid wide open, like we uh, sometimes say. So uh, it's really powerful. You know, I think it's, the space has been growing over the past a uh, few years, but you know, just in the last two years, it seems like it's completely exploding. It totally um, has. Thanks to a lot of the tech as well that's making it more accessible, easier to do, easier to promote, and uh, that's kind of where we fit into the process. That's awesome. And so, how did you create Wave? Like, what was the the seed of it that started, and how did it get going? So it's it's a it's a little bit of a long story. So I'll try and keep it short. But basically, we built Wave as an internal marketing tool for our previous company. Oh, okay. So last year we built um, social audio apps that allowed users to trade short one minute audio clips with one another around certain oh. topics. It was kind of a, um, it was like chat rooms, but with actual audio. And we had a lot of success, a lot of with thousands of users and some good partnerships that people used. And uh, we wound up selling that, um, selling that product. But we were at a point with really had the same problem that a lot of podcasters did. We, we said we had you know, mounds and loads of audio. Mm. And if we could, if we felt like if we could just get this audio on social media and let people hear a quick, get a quick like glimpse a of it. Yeah. yeah. We were just like, if we could just get this on social media, people will hear how great this content is and they'll want to come join the conversation. 
and we realized pretty quickly there's really there's no great way to get audio on social media. You can't upload an MP3 to Facebook. You can't no. put an MP3 on Twitter. You can post a link to it, and you know people have to click through and um, you know actually get to the content um, or play it directly within Twitter, which. We also found that you know putting a long form uh, content piece on Twitter or Facebook's not the great, mm -mm. not really the best practice because people don't hang around very long. So anyway, we we kind of spent a couple weeks putting together a solution of well, if we could turn these audio clips into video, then it will auto play on social media. Yeah. People can hear a quick sample of it, and then they can click through to the long form content piece. And that's kind of when the light bulb went off and um, podcasters started emailing us and saying, Hey, cool. you know, we don't really want your app, but we really want you to create these videos for us. So that's <laughs> where, where wave came from. That's awesome. So yeah, you found a need and, and dove in. Yeah. And so explain to the listeners that don't understand what wave is like, how would you explain it? it so wave is an online tool. You access it through a web browser and it makes it really easy to pull audio clips from really any MP3 file, your podcast music or uh, interviews and pull those audio clips and turn them into social videos with images, uh, waveform animations, text, and it actually creates a video file featuring that audio clip that you can share on Facebook, Twitter, you can really put it anywhere that supports video. And one of the main things that we do is include a waveform animation in those videos. What is so that? that? What is waveform animation? It's, um, you know, think of it as like a, it's a, a quick little animation that bounces with the audio and shows oh, okay. that, that there's actually audio being right. played. Right. Oh, so, yeah, that, those little, um, those little audio, yeah, yeah I know like what you a, mean now. Yeah, like yeah, an EQ, yeah. and, and we have a lot of different designs. So we have, you know, some that sound waves. Rock, sound waves, yeah, it's probably the better way to say it. Um, and we have some different styles and designs that you can pick from. And uh, when you're setting up your your what we call our templates within Wave, you can pick from all these different designs and set it up exactly how you want it. It's a drag and drop interface, but essentially we make it really easy to turn that audio into video content that auto plays on social media. So what kind of, cause I mean, you know, I have a podcast, it's 30 minutes long. <laughs> how do you find that little piece? Like, yeah, that's a, what is it that you share? Yeah, that's a great question. It, it, I, in my opinion, it comes down to, it's a little bit of an art and a little bit of a science as well. So as far as like the science part of it, you want to make sure it's short. Mm -hmm. You want to keep it 30 seconds to, you know, oh, that's short. Yeah. 30 seconds to maybe two, two minutes okay. is depending on where you're sharing it. So Instagram limits you to a minute, right? Um, Facebook, you can usually keep people around a little bit longer into the couple minute range, but Twitter moves so fast. You need I to keep that, keep that thing under a minute. So, um, but actually the clip that you do pick a lot of our users, um, they use it to feature their podcast guest. So they'll create a video that has their headshot, um, you know, use an episode promo image and then um, create a video that, you know, has kind of that, you, you really want to look for those impact statements that are said on the podcast, those kind of one or two things that are said that really stick out and resonate. Right. And if you can find some that kind of leave the listener hanging a little bit, those are the ones that perform the best. When somebody actually listens, they can hear the voice of the guest, mm -hmm. get a feel for their personality and what they're talking about. And hopefully keep it short enough to where it piques their interest and they say, oh, that's a topic that I'm interested in. Or I want to hear their response to that specific question and, and how they approach it. So um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. But, um, you know, hopefully within you know, a 30 minute podcast, there's at least two or three quotes that were really um, that well, uh, well delivered that can fit well as a, as a teaser. But also, you know, we do have um, users that get more creative and they'll actually um, create custom um, audio clips that and just talk about the episode for a minute and they won't actually pull a clip from the interview oh, but they'll just do a quick okay. summary and uh, kind of give users a quick um, idea of, of what's going to be um, held within that episode right that makes sense so almost mm -hmm. like a uh, quote video like you're taking a little like a profound mm -hmm. statement or tip that they're sharing or whatever mm -hmm. Has anyone ever done where they have this snip of like what the question is that someone's asking, like the host is asking and then yeah, so just that or segue into what the answer is? Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of our users will, you know, most podcasters are probably already using Canva or Stencil or you know, some 
um, program to actually create an image and maybe mm. put the quote into the image. Oh, that's um, a good idea. And then they'll use that image and turn it into a video with an audio quote using Wave. So they'll definitely, they'll, they might put the question, you know, what are your top five favorite tools right now? And then the audio clip is the actual answer to that question. It's definitely right. a good way to do it. So how tech savvy do you have to be um, to use Wave? Um, if you're tech savvy enough to create a podcast, you definitely should be tech savvy <laughs> enough to, to use Wave. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, and especially if you if you've used any of these image editing tools like like Canva, as I mentioned, uh, we've structured Wave pretty similarly, where you you know you can upload your own assets. It's a drag and drop canvas where you kind of pick where you want your animation to go. You can add text, and um, you can also choose different sizes as well. So um, if you want to go to Instagram, you want to create a square Wave right. video. We also uh, one thing that's really interesting that a lot of uh, our users are starting to experiment with is. Um, the vertical um, sizes for videos for Snapchat and Instagram stories, because that's where viewers on, on social media are really starting to spend their time is going through their stories, Facebook stories, Instagram stories, and Snapchat. Right. Um, so Wave can allow you to pick that vertical um, video size and turn an audio clip into a video for Instagram stories. I like that for Instagram. And it's funny because I've seen, you know, Gary Vee and whoever mm -hmm. have had those little video clips and I'm like, the hell did they get a square video <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um you can't it's really difficult to do on your phone so um yeah. you know to record something like that so with a waves a web application so you can create it from your desktop and then we have a um, text mms feature where it actually sends you a text with the video to your phone and you can just download it directly um, from your mobile device Nice. And I love that it's geared towards, you know, you can have a Facebook size because that's, I guess, in my head, I imagined, you know, everything is horizontal. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the fact that you can make it square and have it, you know, fit the different platforms is uh, super handy. So do you have to start from scratch when you use the different um, picture sizes or does it like change it or you no. can play each side each time? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, you'll, you'll create a new template each time. Right. Um, so, and that's why, but you can save multiple templates on your um, account. So you can have your square and your vertical and um, the horizontal are the three different sizes. So you can save them to your account, but you do need to, if you want to refresh the design, you kind of start from scratch right. each time. Yeah, if that makes sense. I like how you can make it match your branding so you can have, you know, whatever image fits you. Yeah, that's the biggest thing that we found when we kind of created the early versions of Wave. We've kind of force people into um, kind of uh, we, we force people into a specific design, like, Hey, your image goes here, your right. animation goes here. And we realized really quickly that people, you know, they want their videos to fit their branding. So they don't yeah. want their logo covered up. They don't want, um, you know, certain aspects of their um, iTunes artwork or the links that they want people to go to that they'll include in their image. Uh, they don't want that covered up. So we offer that kind of drag and drop customization to, get it exactly how you want it. And um, your video always can always look unique from other wave users as well. Yeah, absolutely. So has anyone ever used it for different applications other than taking video uh, podcast snippets just out of curiosity? Yeah, a lot of musicians are signing oh, up as well. Um, especially yeah, yeah, yeah. like um, independent musicians and emerging artists, they'll, um, they're not quite at the point where they have a professionally done music video. So they need to be able to bridge that gap and turn their music into audio, into video content. So um, that's a great way to use it. We also have authors that have audio books that'll use it to, oh. they might read a, a section or, or clip a section yeah. of their audio book and um, turn it into videos. Uh, a lot of coaches and, and authors or coaches and um, different types of bloggers that they don't actually have a podcast, but they're really comfortable opening up their recording application and, you know, just doing two or three minutes of audio that they want to share on social media. So you don't actually have to have a podcast to use wave. You just need to have an MP3 file or record directly within wave. So it oh, you really, can record directly in wave. That's awesome. Yep, yeah. So um, it's just, you know, most of our, our users are podcasters because yeah. it's a natural fit, but yeah, you can record directly within wave as well. So anybody can use it. Um, so it really also becomes a tool that, you know, video content there, you get so many, there's so many benefits of putting video on social media because Facebook and Twitter, every, all of these platforms want more video content because mm -hmm. it keeps people around longer. 
So the more video content you can create, the better. But we have found some people, you know, you may not want to, you know, get a, get the lighting perfect or, um, you know, you might be having a bad hair day or something like that. So, you know, an easy <laughs> way to create um, video content without actually using a camera, it's, it's kind of a great um, segue into that. Because I guess really in that case, then you can use your social media graphic that you're going to use for a blog and mm-hmm. then give a quick audio like about what the blog is and then upload yep. that out of a static image. Yeah, exactly. We do that for all of our blog posts. I'll record oh, awesome. just 45 seconds or so yeah, that yeah. talks about the blog post. Like the recent one we did for the um, do's and don'ts of promoting your podcast on social media. We um, had a quick, just a quick 30 second video that talks about some of the main points and we're able to put that on Instagram. We put it on Facebook with a link to the post because anytime you can actually, again, kind of goes back to the power of audio. Anytime you can get your voice in front of somebody right. and have them listening, you're going to be much more successful than, Hey, check out this blog post. Um, exactly. Yeah. So that's, uh, it, it's been really effective for us to use it that way. That's awesome. That's good to know. I love testing out new different ideas. Cause you get kind of stuck in a rut sometimes, right? You do the same thing and you know, yeah. you're kind of like <laughs> your, your content marketing or social media, it can kind of be on autopilot. So to try something new and test it and see what the results are. Yeah. And also I think that's a great point. And alongside of that, everybody else is also kind of stuck in a rut as well. True. Which means that the social media, that the viewers on social media, they're seeing the same type of content yeah. over and over again. So things that you can do to stand out from other people, you know, social, there's been some studies that I, I don't know if I believe the exact, you know, some people say that like our, our attention span on social media is less than a goldfish these days. You, know, <laughs> you, you see, I know, I don't think it's quite that bad, but <laughs> I, I kind of, um, if you have a significant other that uses social media quite a bit, it's actually fascinating. Like sit and just watch somebody scroll through oh, their yeah, feed yeah, yeah. and you will see they go so, so fast. And when they stop on something, try and figure out like, wait, what, what made them stop? Was, was it there some type of yeah. animation or was it the words that were in the post? But you really just need to think through like, you know, as a marketer, you're trying to kind of get into that psychology of, of social right. media viewers and, what can I do to stand out and kind of, um, cause the toughest thing is just getting that initial look on social media and okay, kind of getting that initial hook. So, uh, that's what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, not only are we trying to make audio very easy to share, but our goal is to create, you know, eye catching video content yeah. with these animations and different styles and being able to be on different platforms. Uh, it's kind of our, our main focus. And that's so true. And really how you were saying, cause I know I've thumbed through Facebook and my daughter sitting beside me. She's like, stop, what's that? I'm like, I don't yeah, care about that. I'm exactly. <laughs> no, it's my phone. Yeah. Um, but it's like, yeah, what grabs her attention is not going to grab mine. So it's like, you also have to think about who your target market is and who your ideal client is. And like, what is it that grabs their attention? You know, because everyone, there's no mm-hmm. cookie cutter answer, right? Like every, every audience is a little bit different and every business is going to handle it a little bit differently. Yeah, definitely. And you know, this kind of just goes to general social media um, guidance. But mm-hmm. I, th- I think kind of the best way to approach that is to first think about wh- who's the niche that I'm focusing on. Yeah. Of course, you know, you're going to reach a, a larger amount of people than that. But how far can you niche down? Uh, because the more you understand your niche that you're focusing yeah. on, the better you can um, craft messages that are going to get their attention and also try and figure out, I think this is a big mistake that a lot of people make is where do my people hang out online? Absolutely. Just just because Facebook is the biggest social media platform out there. Maybe that doesn't mean that that's where you should be spending all your time. Yeah. Um, One example that I found is really interesting for us is we have more success on Instagram than anywhere else. And I know my team it, member just like, it's just like, Lindsay, you need to be on Instagram more because of this, this, and this. And I'm like, Oh really? Cause honestly, I don't pay attention to Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> thoroughly enough. But um, there are, there are so yeah. many podcasters on Instagram. I've been just checking that out the past week. I'm like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know why, because Instagram does not support audio. No, you it's can't even click, visually based and you can't even click through links no. to get to a, an MP3. Um, but our content fits perfectly on Instagram yeah. and we reshare a lot of what our users create. So it's a great place to check out what, um, how wave works and what people are doing with it. Um, but it's interesting that like if you, know, we would have known that unless we tested it out yeah, exactly. and then doubled down on what was working. Yeah. So you just need to figure out where your people are hanging out 
how you can reach them and grab their attention. Um, and now because of Instagram being su so successful, we're starting to create more content for Instagram stories using yeah. Wave. So it's a nice fit to, to go down that road. Exactly. I was just uh, giving some advice to my client last week. I'm like, your target market, they don't even know what Twitter is hardly. They're not on it. Let's mm -hmm. pull out, you know, we put it up there anyways, and that's fine. But let's focus more on Instagram and optimizing that because mm -hmm. he's starting to get a lot of traction. So if you see that, and that's the whole thing, right? Analyzing all your stats and stuff. But, and same with me, I mean, clearly I'm, you know, and with the help of wave, I'm like, I think that's perfect. Yeah. And the kind of the, the advantage that you have that a lot of people don't know about is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, they will give you every piece of data that you want because they want you to advertise. Yeah. Eventually they want you to say like, Oh, I'm getting X number of uh, views on this type of post. And so they give you all the information. You just have to go to your settings and look at the analytics page and um, think Instagram is called insights and uh, Facebook and Twitter. It's analytics. So you yeah. can get to all that information. And um, I, ju I just look at it monthly and I you know, keep track of our trends um, mm -hmm. and, and go into those reports to, to make sure things are uh, in the right direction on each platform. For sure. And, um, have you ever boosted uh, a wave quote unquote wave yeah, post? I have Facebook. Um, so f the only trick with Facebook is most of the wave videos that our users are creating, mm -hmm. they're usually pretty text heavy, um, because you want that quote feature very large oh, and you know, you yeah. want a link to the podcast. So when you boost it, um, Facebook will sometimes turn you down for having more than 20% text. I know, I they stopped that stupid 20% thing and then they kind of brought it back and they've been yeah. like, oh, it's so painful. I know it's so hard to keep up with it. But, um, so usually what we'll do is we'll just kind of create a separate version of that video with right, less right. text and focus more on the audio content. But we actually have a, um, pretty large radio broadcast, um, group out in California that that's what they use wave for is you know, they have a much bigger budget than a lot of us um, podcasters and entrepreneurs do. Yep. Uh, but that's what they do. They create videos with wave and um, they promote them on Facebook and they've been getting a lot really positive results because again, it goes back to Facebook and a lot of these platforms promoting video. When you boost a video post, you're paying per watch and right. it's a lot lower cost per watch than if you're paying per clicks. Interesting. So you, so you get a lot more bang for your buck when you're promoting video. Yeah, that'd be fun to uh, fun to play with for sure. So let's give some um, of our listeners a few extra hints on the do's and don'ts when you're promoting your podcast. I know you were saying kind of, we were talking about that strange anomaly where, you know, we're starting to promote podcasts on Instagram, which is strange because it is totally visual. Um, are there any other trends that you see or mistakes or things that we should and shouldn't do? Yeah. So the, the biggest one, and it seems so basic, but this is one of those problems that we see all the time is a lot of people are not explaining why someone should listen. Um, a lot of uh, social media promotion is more about, Hey, what, here's what's new. Like we just released this new episode. I know. Um, and you have to put yourself in the shoes of, again, your target niche audience that's on social media and sees that it goes back to, you know, they're scrolling through fast, fast, fast. Why do they need to click on that? So that that's drives really, me crazy. It, it really that. does I still all the time. Here's a new episode. I talked to this person. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I know. And what is it about? Um, why do exactly. I <laughs> what's it about? And why do people care? And, and again, there's probably a, a plenty of reasons why somebody should listen to it. And if you answer that question multiple times, mm -hmm. that gives you four or five more tweets to try oh, out. Totally. And test. Um, so that's really the biggest thing is, is answer, I, I try to answer two questions. One, why should someone listen and mm -hmm. how do they listen? That's another problem where you know, so most people are iTunes. I think it's 70% of podcasts are consumed through iTunes, but I mean, 30% elsewhere, is, that's a, not something to completely write off. So no. you, you might need multiple tweets, you know, put one pushed in iTunes, one to uh, Android or uh, whatever your other preferred platform would be. Do you share your iTunes link versus your website link? So we, you, we recommend if you have the website, that's where we want to push people. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we think. And again, it goes back to our, most of our customers are businesses that are yeah. using podcasts 
as a, as a content marketing channel. Um, now if you're doing a comedy show and you have a website and you know, you're just doing it once yeah. every so weeks, you probably want to push people to iTunes cause you're really trying to optimize for listens in that case. Right. Right. Um, so it goes back to your goal. Um, but you know, when you push into your website, you're able to get them hooked into your newsletter and, um, you know, try to have some different, um, call to actions included as well. I know. And I've seen some people use the Libsyn link and mm -hmm. I'm like, no. Yeah, that's a tough one because <laughs> you just get the audio file playing within your browser, but there's no, you don't get a description. There's no way to no. subscribe. And that's, that's definitely a big, that that's a, I need to update our blog post and put that in there. <laughs> Cause I, I, I see it and I'm like, Oh no, <laughs> it drives yeah. me crazy. Um, any, seeing as you're doing so well on Instagram, any good tips with, um, with posting there? So I've tried to do a lot of research on this and I can't quite figure out what the exact ramifications are, but we have found when we post consistently mm -hmm. the same time of day over and over again, it, that really drives engagement. Yeah. I don't know if that's because our audience is just, you know, on at that time or if Instagram actually promotes that when you do it. I'm not sure what the, the reasoning is, but we post once in the morning and then once in the evening. And those are the two best times for us to post. Um, every now and then we'll post during lunch. But, you know, I found that if I just throw a random post up at 3 p.m., yeah. it, it can be just as well done as any others, but it just doesn't get the view and the reach that others do. So yeah. that's where um, a scheduling tool comes into play. Yeah, absolutely. Instagram's a little tricky because... I you, know, it's a you, pain. <laughs> yeah, you can't automate that... Um, that process, but Buffer's got it pretty close to where it sends you a push notification that, yeah. that you can then upload. Same with Hootsuite. Schedulegram though is not that bad. Once you get- Oh, I need to check that out. Yeah, so like S-C-H-E-D, like, like your scheduling, whatever that word is, mm -hmm. Schedulegram or something. Yeah. Um, so you have to do the first six or whatever. This is how it was, I think it's been about nine months now, but you set up the first six and it pushes and you do it. And so you have to do the first six manually. And then once mm. it like accepts you, then it just does it. It's like oh, nice. know, 15 bucks a month or something. Oh, nice. Yeah. I need to check that out. Cause yeah. I mean, we spend, I spend, I bet I spend 30 minutes every day just, I know posting to Instagram. <laughs> it's painful. <laughs> uh, but while we're on the topic of Instagram, I have a, another great tool oh, that perfect. a lot of people don't know about. It's called IQ tags. It's not the prettiest oh. thing in the world, but it works so well. So it goes back to your hashtags. Right. You'll, if you don't include hashtags in your Instagram post there, it's going to be really hard for them to, you know, um, reach a large number of right, people right. outside of your following. So it's called IQ tags, but it, the domain is IQTA.GS. And um, you can type in a keyword and it suggests um, all the hashtags that you should be using and you nice. can just click them and it copies them to your clipboard automatically and you can paste them into your post. Super easy. That is great. And it's just for Instagram. Like it's just zeroed in on Instagram. Um, no, it's, it's, um, it is tailored to Instagram, but you could use those hashtags in Twitter, Twitter as whatever, well. Yeah. yeah but you know, with 140 characters, which might be changing soon. Um, I know but, they're looking um, like going up to what? 160, 280, 280. Yeah. They're going to double it basically. Ew. Um, so people are testing that out. We don't know if it's actually going to go yeah. through or not. I think it, um, it makes them different and they should just keep it the way it is. Yeah. Um, and you know, another tip that I, I think flies under the radar. Um, and I know you've done a good job at this is promoting old episodes that, you know, yeah. podcasts, they don't go anywhere. I know we put a lot of effort in promoting our most recent stuff, but, um, podcasts are evergreen content. They're always going to be there. And, um, it, it's always a good practice to go back and, maybe um, try some different angles on your social media promotion around those specific episodes, try some different keywords, try some different messaging. Um, and if you're using a tool like wave or creating images, whatever it may be, you know, go back and try some different things. Um, and you know, I think the, but overall the thing I've been trying to get better at with social media is just to have fun, put so much pressure on it. Yeah. And, but if you just let your personality come through, that's going to get you ahead of the game you know, ahead of 90% of other people. I know it can be fairly dry out there. <laughs> it, it really can be. I'm actually going on Facebook live for the first time tonight with another uh, content marketer friend of mine. Her name's Lindsay too. So we're thinking of doing like the wine with Lindsay's and oh, like we're, I like actually, that. we're actually going to have wine. So it's too nice. Nice. 
at night. Yeah, people, <laughs> yeah, people are going to love that stuff. And so, especially whatever. I think we have to, I think it goes back to your point about, um, yeah, I think you said you were watching your daughter on social media and you know, most people go to social media to be entertained or have fun and get away from work stuff. True, um, true. I think as entrepreneurs, we probably go to social media for work purposes primarily, but that's yeah. not how the rest of the world works. Um, you no, know, that's true. They want to have some fun. So try and try and give it to them a little bit. And there are a lot more podcasters that are, um, I know a friend of mine, she, you know, has a regular business podcast, mm -hmm. but now she's doing one with, um, a friend of hers and it's just, it's woman splaining. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's just going to be complete comedy, but just for the fun of it, I'm like, good. Yeah. Girl, that's awesome. I love that. We have, we have a lot of comedy podcasts that use wave and it's just the stuff that they, you know, the creativity and the entertainment. It's really, I mean, that's yeah. what people are looking for an escape to get away from their normal day to day. So the more you can do that, the better. And with wave, it's like, if you hear a 30 second clip and it's hilarious for sure, that's going to grab your attention more than because comedy is like listening, right? Yeah. Verse, and that's the whole point. And if you can grab someone with a video where it auto plays in Facebook and it, you know, says the joke or whatever the heck it is, yeah. Um, you're, yeah. Versus yeah. A, a static graphic. Yeah. I think, you know, anytime you're really trying to get to the emotional storytelling side mm -hmm. of things, whether it's comedy or, um, you know, self-help gurus, um, self-help podcast, or, um, you know, we also have, you know, just a lot of, I, I don't know the exact term for it, but you know, people that are overcoming, um, challenges and obstacles, yeah. whether it be medical or, you know, mental things like that. A lot of those, types of shows you use wave because you know you can only express so much emotion in text. You, you yeah. can only say like this story is so powerful. You have to listen to it. Well, the, you know, that I only know. gets across so much, but <laughs> yeah. But um, if you actually include a clip from the yeah. show on social media, people can actually get that short, quick little feeling and they'll say, wow, I need to listen to the rest of this. And or, um, or that sounds like me or yeah, yeah exactly. On that emotional level, mm -hmm. an emotional level more so. Yeah. Are there any um, mistakes that people make with waves that they shouldn't like any tips that you could give that way? Um, yeah, you're probably not including certain things within the design of their video, um, which again, we're all for minimalist design. We love that. Like don't clutter up too much, right. but um, definitely tell people how to, how to get it or, you know, maybe put the Apple, um, Apple podcast icon within oh, okay. the image, just a visual representation that says, Hey, you know, here's where you should go to download the episode. Um, and then sometimes, you know, um, just making sure that uh, it's just a very clear design, which it's a very subjective thing because everyone yeah. has, has different um, approaches for how they do that, but making sure that it's clear and um, has a nice design to it. And most of these tools, again, going back to Canva and stencil is one that I really love. Um, they provide templates that already look really nice and you can mm -hmm. just plug your own assets into. Um, so starting there is always a, a good place as well. Yeah. And that's true because you can easily clutter something. Oh, I need to include this or they need to do this. And yeah, and they're just going to, yeah. Miss the message for all the clutter. Yeah. That is great tips. So how can people find wave sign up for it and all that good stuff? Yeah, you can, uh, the best place is our website you go to wave.co and it's wave with two V's as well. W A V V E dot C O. Um, but also if you just want to see what other people are creating with wave, I think probably the best place is our Instagram page. Yeah. It's at get wave, um, G E T W A V V E. And we're always posting, we post some of the best videos that get created and oh, awesome. um, that's a great idea. Yeah. And a lot of people will comment and, you know, yeah, just yeah. talk to us Smart. about them. And uh, that's where we have a lot of engagement with our, um, our customers as well. So jump on Instagram, check it out, drop us a note. We love chatting back and forth. And, um, you can also try wave free. There's a free plan that gives you up to a minute of video that you can create. You can go through the whole process, test it out. Um, and then the entry plan is $10 that gets you $10 uh, or 10 minutes of video per month. So yeah, you pay for cheap. how much video you create. Um, uh, yeah, so pretty affordable. It's a, it's a great, mm -hmm. it's a great marketing tool to add to the, to the repertoire. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to diving into it myself. I've been a little, been meaning to do it a couple of weeks ago, but uh, with traveling and such, it just kind of got in the way. But um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing um, the tool with us and some great tips on how to apply it to our business and help promote our podcast a little bit better. 
Great. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And if anybody wants to chat with us or you know, go to our website, we'll probably send you a chat through our website. We love, <laughs> we love interacting and, and chatting That's with people. Great. So don't be shy. Find us on Twitter and Instagram and, and talk to us. We, uh, we love interacting. Awesome. That's so cool. Um, yeah. So thanks again. And so that is that episode of sailing to success podcast folks. You can of course can find it at lindsayphillips.com or smoothbusinessgrowth.com. And if you have a podcast of your own and you need some podcast production show notes and take that off your plate, of course, um, check out our services on our website. So have a profitable and productive week and may the winds always be at your back. Mm-hmm.